Hello everybody, this is Pastor John Kenny, and thank you for joining us for today's edition of Uncut with Rev J. Here on Uncut, we take the time to discuss those challenging and thought-provoking questions that pertain to our faith. We take the time to address those concerns and those issues that we grapple with as people of faith. And today, I want to challenge your thinking. I want to challenge your thinking about your faith. I want to challenge your thinking about the persons that are in your ear. I want to challenge your thinking today as it centers around those who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live in a culture, we live in a time, we live in a day where everything is at our disposal. You can find information for anything and everything with the click of a button. Internet has information in droves right there at your immediate disposal. And I want to speak to you today from this idea about a faith that is a knockoff. A knockoff faith. Now I know you're saying to yourself, Pastor, I don't understand what you mean by having a knockoff faith. Back in the day when I was growing up in school, back in the day, and it's, and it's still somewhat prevalent today, uh, people were enamored and people were drawn to and people were hungry for designer clothes, designer items. And because there was such a great demand and a great hunger for these designer items, people would go into their back rooms and they would begin to create these knockoff versions. They looked like they were the real things. They felt like they were the real things. They even had the little logos, the designs, the emblems, the stitching that made it look like it was the real thing. But upon closer examination, you discovered that the item was literally a knockoff. It, it was an imitation. It was a replication of something that was real but it wasn't real. And when we talk about faith, my brothers and sisters, the one thing you have to be concerned about and the one thing you have to pay close attention to is for those persons who are promulgating and proclaiming faith today, if they are authentic or are they presenting a knockoff kind of gospel. Jesus says it like this when you get over to Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 15. Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. He goes on to say that a good fruit cannot, a good tree rather cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce a good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. In this era we live in today, when so many people are proclaiming the gospel for purposes other than the gospel, and they present to us a knockoff version a knockoff brand. Let me tell you something today. 
that when it comes to faith, when it comes to your faith as a disciple, when it comes to your faith as a person of faith, when it comes to your faith as a believer, there's some things you have to understand. Number one is, you cannot manipulate God with your faith. I don't care how many times you hear or how many times people tell you that you can, you can make a demand on God or tell God what you want God to do with his word. You are not going to manipulate God with the word of God. Because God stands outside of creation, ordering the steps and movements of creation. God is the creator. And creation can never tell the creator what the creator is to do. In other words, God is never going to allow himself to be subject to the very thing that God created. So when you talk about faith and you talk about growing and talk about your relationship with God, remember this, you are not going to be able to manipulate God with the word of God because God honors his word and with the honoring of God's word there's something called the sovereignty of God not only is your faith not going to manipulate God but your faith is not going to cause God to somehow now act as if he's an non-sovereign, unsovereign God. The sovereignty of God says, I will do whatever I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it, with whom I want to do it, in order to accomplish my objective. That simply means that God will allow things to happen in our lives. The, the sovereignty of God will allow things to happen in our lives so that God's purpose for our lives might be fulfilled. You're not going to use your faith to manipulate God to do what you want God to do. And you're not going to be able to use the word your faith to cause God not to go against what God desires to do. Jesus said it like this, I've come that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. But my brothers and sisters, the abundant life that Christ was talking about had nothing to do with you acquiring a whole lot of tangible items. Jesus said, the poor you will have among you always, which is to suggest that there's going to be some people who believe in God, who have faith in God, but they're not going to have all of the material means or resources available to them that others may have. That's the sovereignty of God at work. That is the, that is the, the, the essence, the nature of God in this, in this world that he has constructed and he's allowed to function the way it functions. Sovereignty of God. Your faith is never going to absolve God from his sovereignty. Your, your faith is never going to cause God to create this world that you and I desire to have created. Because in the reality is in the theodicy of who God is that God permits good and evil to exist in the same place. Why? I don't have any idea. Maybe it's, maybe it's to force us to a place in him where we begin to lean and depend more on God than we do the world around us. Jesus says that you're going to have people around you who are going to be proclaiming stuff to you that's really not the truth. They, they're, they're going to be disguised as harmless sheep, but their intentions are to destroy you. Their intentions are to pilfer you. Their intentions are to molest you. Their intentions are to rape you. Their intentions are to destroy you because that's what the thief comes to do, to kill to steal, and to destroy. So as you journey and struggle with your own faith, understand your faith 
is never going to manipulate God. I don't care how much they tell you that you can tell God which and God's going to honor it. No, it's not. Your faith is never going to cause God to no longer be sovereign, that God's going to do what God is going to do. He told his children in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, he told them that, that, that uh, uh, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. And those plans included 70 years of Babylonian captivity. They may not have wanted to deal with it, but they had no choice but to deal with it because God had something that God wanted to accomplish in their lives. So, you're, so faith is never going to cause God to throw away his sovereign designs and wills for his people. And faith is never going to cause God to create this utopia of a world that we want to live in. That we've got to wrestle with God and walk with God and lean on God and trust the fact, as he told the prophet Isaiah, that, that, that I am the one who's holding you. I've, I'm holding you. I'm carrying you. I've got you. I've loved you. I created you. I loved you. And I'm carrying you. So as you continue in this journey of faith, as you continue in your walk, understand, faith is an evolutionary process. It grows day by day, minute by minute, second by second. It grows hour by hour. And my faith is never going to be able to manipulate God. My faith is never going to cause God to lose his sovereignty. And my faith is never going to cause God to create this world of utopia for me. Because that's not how God operates. That's not how God functions in the lives of God's people. That does not mean you lose hope. That does not mean you become discouraged. It does not mean you give up on your dreams. It just simply means you've got to learn how to trust God. Even when God is not doing what you would like God to do. You've got to learn how to depend on God. Even when it looks like God ain't nowhere around it. You've got to learn how to journey in the future with God. Even when your future looks bleak. Authentic faith in God is never going to be a knockoff. It's, it's always going to keep God in his proper place in your life. But when you have a knockoff faith. When you're hearing knock off faith theology it always wants to put God in the place of being your genie and God is not your genie so hope and pray that you strive for an authentic faith a real faith a faith that is able to endure what life brings your way even if God doesn't change your circumstances be encouraged, be prayerful, be watchful, be discerning, but more importantly, be anchored in the faith that God is doing something wonderful in your life. Until next time, this has been Rev J. This has been Uncut. You be blessed, you be encouraged. Peace.